All right, everybody, on today's video, we're going to talk about why we're staying in Bradenton, Florida. We actually renewed our lease for another year in Bradenton, Florida. So we're going to tell you why we're staying here and why we're not moving away. If you're following our channel, you know that we moved to Bradenton, Florida after Hurricane Ian destroyed Fort Myers. We were in Fort Myers for a little over a year. And before that, we were exactly one year in Alabama. And before that, we were in Naples, Florida. So most of the time, you guys have seen that every roughly one year period, we move somewhere different. So you're probably wondering, why would we stay in Bradenton, Florida if we usually get up and move? Are we in love with this place? Are we staying here forever? I hope not. But let me tell you on today's video why we're staying in Bradenton, Florida, and why I'm a little upset about it, and why I'm not upset about it as well. The fact that we're staying here is in itself a good sign, because if it sucked, we would definitely be leaving if it sucks. And good for Bradenton, it hasn't sucked as much as Fort Myers, and it definitely hasn't sucked as much as Alabama. I do, however, miss living in my hometown, Naples, Florida. However, I've decided because of police profiling and discrimination, and the fact that we never accomplished anything meaningful in 20 years there, that perhaps it really isn't a place for us to be, and that somewhere else, there's something better for us. So why are we staying in Bradenton, Florida? I even considered moving to Miami, I really actually wanted to move to Miami, but there's a problem. Katie refuses to learn Spanish, and she drives like an idiot, and in Miami, you have to be a superb driver, and I'm worried that if we ended up in Miami, I'd be worried about her just driving to get some Starbucks without getting road raged, because she has a tendency to drive like a come basura, y se la atravesa en el medio a la gente. And that right there is the absolute worst thing you can be in Miami. Other than a pata sucia, and she is Irish. We argue about this here at home all the time. But that's not the only way that Katie has inconvenienced my life. She also recently got a real estate license here in Bradenton, Florida, and I had to spend thousands of dollars getting her access to an MLS, a bunch of schools and licensing, and now she likes her broker here in Branton, which means that I'm stuck in this place because she wants to have a freaking life. And quite frankly, if she is going to be a realtor, we can't get up and move from city to city every year because we have to be stable for that type of career. Unlike my YouTube channel, where I can make money in a place that I don't even live in. And there's a few other factors, of course, while we're staying here, they're a little bit more positive than Katie becoming a dang realtor. Literally, if we didn't have this freaking rock tied to our foot, I might have even got up and moved as far as California to be successful with my YouTube. But, once again, Katie's career has me tied to a specific area. I originally had given her one year. I said, hey, Katie, if in one year you're not selling a crap load of houses here, we're getting up and we're leaving. However, I got so much money invested in her real estate career that now I have to stretch that another year to see if this is actually going to work out for her or not. The other reason I'm staying here is because I've made more money this year than I have ever made my entire life as of income. Not as of real estate transactions or inheritances or whatever the crap. Actual income. This is the first time in my life that I make $100,000 or roughly about $100,000 out of my pure income. And of course, we'll have to see what the deductions look like since we invest a lot of it back into the YouTube channel. But you get the idea. If things are economically going well, we're living nice. Why would you mess with a formula that's working? And for me, I can't think of a single day in the one year that I've been here 
that I have had a bad day. You know what I'm talking about? Those days where just something goes completely wrong. Sure, I've had minor inconveniences, but I haven't in the year that I've been here had something so horrendous happen to me that I've thought about leaving the area. There's been some routine and uneventful days, but I can't really think of a bad memory that I've lived in Branton, Florida. I had some scary moments in Fort Myers. I had some definitely scary moments in Alabama. Let me tell you, I could write a book about scary things in Alabama. In Naples, of course, was a tragedy, but here I haven't had anything happen that I've been like, oh, this definitely changes the way I feel about anything. A few keyboard warriors have made some threats, and once in a while my neighbors walk around at 4 in the morning while I'm trying to sleep, and I can hear their footsteps on the ceiling, but other than that, minor inconveniences. Why would you leave a place that hasn't been bad to you? We go to the beach as much as three times a week, and from Lakewood Ranch to Anna Maria Island can be about 45 minutes. That is a lot of time on Cortez, and I do feel that perhaps we should have moved closer to the water, except for, I remember living in Fort Myers, and I know that living near the water can become tragic, both because of the red tide, hurricanes, and of course, winter congestion would make living by the water a complete nightmare, not the whole time, but during parts of the year, and that's why we've decided to stay in Lakewood Ranch where at least the roads are clear throughout the whole year. The elevation is 17 feet, so I don't have to worry about a storm surge. And of course, you are so far from the water that if there is red tide, it doesn't make you dearly sick. Because we did consider moving further towards the coast so we could access the beaches more easily, but that comes with a whole nother realm of complications. Now, I was still debating moving either to Orlando or Miami to be closer to my Latin culture, but our leasing company, out of the blue, offered us a $1,000 incentive if we renewed our lease early, which means we didn't really get even enough time to think about it. Now that I look back on it, it's kind of a predatory move on their part to make sure that we don't leave or that we don't have enough time to debate whether we're going to leave. I guess they understand their customer. And quite literally, if they hadn't had pulled a rabbit out the hat with this incentive to stay here, we might have actually planned to leave. So if you're renting an apartment and you're thinking or debating about moving out, the leasing companies know you're doing that, so give yourself extra time to plan because they may pull a rabbit out the hat. If they had just been the actual renewal date, we might have actually planned on moving. But I'll give them that, at least they're knocking a thousand dollars off my rent versus jacking up my rent, which would definitely guarantee leaving for sure because we're already paying way too much money to live here. But my credit is good now and my income is good, which means if I wanted to move to one of those expensive Miami places, I actually could. But we're actually happy here. Everything is kind of quiet and normal for us, even despite the fact that we're YouTubers. And that in itself can make life very complicated. We go to the beach a few times a week, like we said. We have a great selection of beaches. We can go to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Bradenton Beach, Anna Maria Island, St. Pete Beach. In the summertime, we could even make it as far as Clearwater Beach if there's no traffic. Between beaches and a much nicer selection of restaurants, which is important to us as millennials, we like to have hundreds of options for dining. We have that here. We have access to Cuban, incredible Mexican food, authentic barbecue, every type of food that we like they have here. Within less than an hour, we can be in Bradenton, Sarasota, St. Pete, Tampa, and the outskirts of Southwest Florida. Venice, Arcadia, Lakeland, all that is within like an hour or roughly. This Central Florida location that we have is very advantageous for traveling and for switching up the scenery. We could be in a lot of different places in one day. When we were living in Naples, it was 170 miles to Tampa or 140 miles to Miami. So you can't really beat the centralized location of this place. And now we're approaching hurricane season. 
we see that this area of Florida is also much less propense of a direct hit from a hurricane, which can just about flip your life upside down. We've been there many times through Charlie, Irma, Ian, and a few other storms like Wilma. So we're having a good time. We're going to the beach. We're going to good restaurants. We're completely safe here. There's no real threat to our safety. Everything's just been perfect fine. So why would you mess up a good formula? Do I want to live in Miami at some point in my life? I do. Do I eventually want to live in California at some point in my life? I do. But for now, this is just going to have to work. This is the highest standard of living I've ever accomplished in my life. And it's kind of crazy to switch up that formula and go try my luck somewhere else, not knowing if it's going to work out as sweet as it's been working here. I'm close enough to Southwest Florida, where if I do miss Naples or Fort Myers, I can run down there in about two hours, but I'm far enough from it where I don't have to worry about all the people that I knew before I left. Like that homeless guy who headbutted me on Fort Myers Beach. No, the homeless people here in Bradenton have actually been warm and welcoming to me, which has allowed me the opportunity to make some great documentaries, meet some interesting people that are from this area, and bring you guys incredible content. So the reception here hasn't been bad. A few knuckleheads and parish have made threats, but that's the poorest, trashiest area of this metropolitan area. So you can expect those people to hate life because, oh, you live in Lakewood Ranch. Well, aren't you fancy? I'll bet your poop don't stink. Um, no, I bet I risked my life and worked like an animal to get here so I freaking deserve it. It's like when you tell people you live in Lakewood Ranch, they're like, Oh, you're one of those fancy folks, aren't you? No, I'm one of those folks who worked hard to be where I'm at. I started off on a trailer park right off of US-41. Now I'm in Lakewood Ranch. Nobody pays my rent. I gotta go out there and get it myself. But there is that kind of stereotypical Lakewood Ranch millennial YouTubing I get the idea. They hate me because I'm living better than them. And that's really been a huge problem for me with the audience here. When you say you live in Lakewood Ranch, they're like, Oh, 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 you fancy. And that right there is called envy. And well, you'll deal with envious people just about everywhere you live. At least here, it's a smaller percentage of the population. It's like when I lived in Alabama, our neighbors would tell us stuff like, you guys are the most decent folks that have ever lived in that house right there. I remember the feller before you guys, he had a lady tied up in a closet with a rope, and he let her out every once in a while with a shame like a dog. And I'm not making that up. Those are the horror stories that my neighbors would tell me about the people that had lived in the house that I was living in previously. But despite they self-described me as the most decent folks that have ever moved down this street, they still ran us out. Because apparently, decent folks isn't what they want in Alabama. But here, like I said, the reception's been good with the community, and that is actually a surprise to me. I'm thinking if I'm from Southwest Florida, there might be some type of regional rivalry, but it hasn't been the case. And I will be honest, I'm a little disappointed to know that I'm going to be driving on the same streets, going to the same businesses, and doing the same old routine. I don't want to fall into a routine. I just want to kind of go out there and experience new places endlessly. Once you travel as much as we have, you feel this never-ending desire to see more. So honestly, the notion of settling down with me almost feels like giving up or putting my life on pause I want to keep moving forward. I want to keep doing different things. And I feel like just because this is working here that I'm settling for it and there could be something greater out there for me. So it's a little difficult for me. I'm not going to lie. I almost did want to get up and move to Miami, Orlando or California. But it seems like life is really holding me down here. And well, there's no need to go against the current if the current's helping you. And you know, living in Alabama was a huge school of life for me. And I learned a lot of things about how to interact with people and how to stay out of the way. And Fort Myers refined that a little bit because it gave me a reminder, some practice on the way you should kind of go about yourself. Basically, if you stay low key anywhere you live, give back to the community and just stay out of certain things. 
you usually do pretty well. In the case of Brayton, I kind of got very involved with the homeless situation. And that right there could definitely create some enemies. I've seen the comments that you guys were saying that eventually law enforcement is going to come find me and make me disappear. But I don't really think I'm on their radar. I feel like everybody understands that I'm just doing my job as a journalist. The type of real journalism that I'm inclined to create is going to be a problem anywhere I live. And in Naples, it became a problem. In Alabama, it definitely became a problem. And in Fort Myers, um, it could have become a problem, but it didn't. And the same thing can be said about here. It could become a problem, but I don't think it will. I think the vast majority of people here actually want real journalism. And again, after all the intimidations and things that I faced in Alabama, it'll be difficult for anybody to top that and actually intimidate me. If you've sailed across an ocean, you won't be intimidated by a creek. Trying to cover news in Montgomery, Alabama was like walking into a war zone, literally. And that right there was more difficult, challenging, and scary than anything I've ever done. A lot of times you guys are like, well, you just walk in these homeless camps and you're not afraid. I'm like, yeah, I lived between Birmingham and Montgomery, Alabama for a year. I, uh, it takes quite a bit to scare me now. The irony of life are things like the crocodile hunter who messed with thousands of gators, crocodiles, and what are the other ones called? Uh, caimans. And then he died because of a stingray. The irony is that most people we see on the news pass away on the interstate on a rainy day and not in a homeless camp recording a YouTube video. So yeah, I've come to the understanding that the work that I do can be dangerous. So is driving a semi-truck on a rainy day and that I'm not going to be paranoid. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to live my life worry-free. And if something ever happens to me, it is what it is. I'm not going to be afraid of the uncertain. I'm not going to be paranoid like I was in Alabama. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm going to live my life normally. And surprisingly, despite the fact I'm a YouTuber and kind of controversial at times, people here don't seem to mind and they treat me like somebody else. And I'll be honest, a YouTuber with 100,000 subscribers, it can be a little overwhelming at times. Living in a place like Montgomery, Alabama, where the people simply don't know how to behave around you, don't know how to act. They're just very awkward. There's another YouTuber that lives not far from where I live. I think he drives around like in an orange Lamborghini or something. Every single day I hear him roar past my house. So when you have YouTubers that are that big and they're living amongst normal people and they're going okay about it, it's a good thing for me as a smaller YouTuber. As you guys know, Mike Jagger lived here on Lakewood Ranch. He recently moved to New York, but they've seen a big wig or two around here, which makes me feel more comfortable that when I run into people in public, they kind of know how to treat you. And that is something where, like, when I first went to Connecticut, I had never in my life stepped foot in Connecticut. The first place I got off at Connecticut was a little lobster place guy in a harley motorcycle saw me recognized me we talked a little bit and we shared some lobster we sat down and ate together at a little bench and it's like that like i'll go to a place i've never been to and people will recognize me so the place that i live in and make most of my content in if it's a weird area it can definitely get creepy but here like i said there's way bigger youtubers than me there's famous people that work out at a gym and they park their car out front and nobody seems to care or mind so if they're having a nice go at it i will definitely be fine and that makes life easier for me that there isn't this weird creepy misunderstanding about people who are on the internet it's a normal thing here we have a lot of other youtubers and famous people and that really makes life easier for me because i don't feel like the people are weird and creepy like they are in other places I've lived. Oh well, that's just part of the package of making YouTube money. You get YouTube money, you get YouTube fame, and you have to deal with the exposure that comes with it, which can sometimes be a little bit too much. And I'm gonna tell you, in Naples, because I was from there, it made it that much creepier. So if you've been watching my videos and you've seen me live in Naples, Alabama, Fort Myers, and now here, let me know what you think about this area compared to some of the other areas I've lived in from your perspective behind the screen. At first, I was a little skeptical about creating content here in Bradenton because I didn't know what would come with it. 
but I'm getting comfortable with the idea of making a lot of journalism here in Bradenton, and so far, it's been all right. Obviously, the most negative aspect about this area is the addiction and the homelessness, and it really is about the worst I've seen anywhere that I've been. I mean, like, literally, the amount of needles that you find here is terrifying. That clearly has to be the worst thing about living in this area that so many people have ended up in that situation and that it's so prevalent. And as I'm meeting these people, I'm finding out that they actually grew up here and they're people that are from here that ended up like that. It's like a whole generation that grew up in Bradenton that ended up in addiction. Some of the people that I've interviewed, I've had people send me Facebook profiles of them or photos of them when they were younger and they were living a normal life and you're like well how do you go from this life what seems to be a normal childhood and youth to now living on the streets but definitely the homeless situation the people living on the streets here has been the most shocking aspect about this area but i meet these people and they seem like genuine people who are just dealing with struggles that's very different than like when i lived in alabama and people were just violent and murderous. That's a whole different type of scenario. And while it is disturbing to see so much homelessness and addiction here, it's a lot better than looking at violence and not being safe in Alabama. There's that dream of a cabin out in the woods with a creek out back. I had that. Yet I'm much happier here paying this high rent so many people are running away and fleeing from these expensive cities like Sarasota area, Miami. But after living in different types of places, I'm starting to understand that there's a reason why it costs more money to live here. I'm understanding that that reason is actually worth working for and paying for. Because when you see what's really out there in other places, you understand the value of Florida. And that's why I'm really glad that I did get to live the nightmare of Alabama because I got to appreciate what really makes Florida special. I would a hundred times over rather deal with homelessness, high rents, and traffic congestion than deal with a community full of hateful and bitter people. So for me, I'm having a great time here. I'm not going to whine and cry about how expensive it is. I'm just going to find a way to have it so that at least I know that I'm living a great life in Florida and not stuck in some miserable, backwards, bitter, hateful place. For me, the high rents are worth it. And I have so many friends that are pressuring me to buy a house. You have to buy a house. You have to own some real estate. I don't want to own a house. I feel like the fact that I don't own real estate is part of why I've been so much more successful here because I can devote my time to working and not to mowing the grass, cutting trees, and that's just for a piece of land, not put a house on it and make it that much more complicated. I don't want that hassle in my life. Living here for this year has been the most trouble-free year of my life, the most worry-free year of my life, because I don't have to worry about this building. The internet signal is incredible here, and that has made my life so much easier. In Fort Myers, we struggled so much with the internet, that it was literally crippling my ability to make money. I also have Starbucks, malls, shopping, restaurants nearby, and that in itself makes life here very convenient. And I think the conveniences that Brinton has given me and having everything accessible from great internet speed to restaurants nearby means I can cut right to the chase and start living my life. I'm not kidding you, while living in Fort Myers, six to eight hours of my week were devoted just to getting access to everyday things or commuting to places or waiting for the internet to download something that ugly chapter of my life is over i have great internet access i have a much easier commute with much less traffic everything is conveniently located where i live now to where everything works fine time is on my side not a constraint but more of an asset to me now and it's that access to infrastructure and everything that I need being accessible and fast that's led me to be able to make more income here and live a much more comfortable life. Because unlike in Fort Myers, where I was either stuck in traffic, driving somewhere far away, a lot of the things that consumed so much of my time in Fort Myers 
are literally at my fingertips now. All right, guys, so that finalizes today's video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. And of course, please share your comments about how we're living now and what you think our future could hold if we stay here for long term or if you think eventually we should just continue this journey moving from place to place endlessly. I miss the lifelong friends that I created in Naples. I miss Jack's chicken from Alabama. I don't miss too much about Fort Myers, but if I do leave Bradenton, I will miss the beaches. I'll miss how comfortable my life has been and a lot of the restaurants that I've discovered. So there's a lot that if I left Bradenton, I would dearly miss. And I've discovered new hobbies like metal detecting. I would definitely have to say that there's a lot of things about this era that I would miss. And if I left, I might be disappointed. Despite the beaches being far, when you arrive to these beaches, there's always parking available. And most of them are very accessible. Besides Siesta Key, where you have to work, what is it, like a mile to get to the beach from the sand? Minor inconveniences, but free parking along the beaches. Come on, that's hard to be checking out.